we're going to talk about edge flow and topology. So the first thing I would suggest for edge flow and topology is to just start with all the details that are absolutely necessary for whatever object you're making. So for a car, you know that you're going to have to have this shape for the wheel arch, so that's a good place to start. There's no avoiding it, you're going to have to have some vertices to create the exact curvature of this or as close as you want to get it. You know, you really can't avoid doing that, so you might as well do it and start out with that and then see where you can go from there. Another thing you want to do is like the doors, for example, a lot of times you're going to want to make the doors. So you're just going to want to have a nice edge loop going down like this and another edge loop going across like this. So these are good starting points because you know that these are things you're going to have to have. And another thing you want to look at is the shading. So you can see the shading here is going straight across. So you can pretty much tell that you're going to need an edge loop following the shading going straight across like this. So you always want to look at shading and things that you absolutely have to add in. So if you can see shading like that, that usually is an indication that there's some sort of bend in this area. And you're going to want to have an edge loop here so that it can bend properly. So for example, the top of this car probably bends in toward the center and then the bottom will probably just bend in towards the bottom. So this line is pretty important for right here. Of course, another line that's going to be important is down here. So you're going to want to make this crease line. So this is another set of edge loops right here that you're going to want to have. And then of course the bottom, you're going to want to have the bottom then you might want to have another edge loop here to create this triangle window part. So if you have a, a, an edge loop kind of like this, so it kind of starts out more over here and then tries to work towards the center between these two edge loops. Because you always want to try to keep everything as evenly spaced as possible. It's not always possible to keep it perfectly evenly spaced. Like down here, we have smaller spacing than we do right here. That's because this detail is absolutely necessary and obviously this is the bottom of the car. We can't move this edge any lower than that so this is going to have to be the distance and spacing for these two. We can't really avoid that. So we want to try to keep even spacing though if we can. So here we're trying to keep spacing as even as possible. And then again the back of the window that's another part that you're going to absolutely have to make. So we're going to have to have an edge loop here somewhere so we can probably just bring this down something like this. So if we just make an edge loop right here, again we'll have somewhat even spacing. If I draw my line a little better, it'll probably look a little bit more even. So you see it looks like pretty even from here to here, to here, and then there. So there's a little bit of extra distance here, but that's not really avoidable because you have to go to right here in order to make this triangle. Another detail you might want to make is like this line right here, this nice little crease line on the top of the hood. So you'd make this crease line on the top of the hood, and this would go down the back and then it would eventually just connect over to here. And then of course this part would go down along the trunk line right here. So you already have that nice and set up and you could even take this and probably bring this one down something like this. And even though this is a little bit less spacing here to here it's still a gradual change. It's not like a drastically smaller space. It's just a little bit smaller so it's maybe this much smaller. If you were to compare these two, the sizes, you know, roughly the same, maybe a little bit smaller than that, but still. And then to continue, you would add in lines like this, and of course, a line down here at the bottom, or an edge loop, whatever you want to call it. And to keep some even spacing, you'd probably want to add in another edge loop right here eventually. That wouldn't be one of your first priorities, because this is not really a necessary line. But this will help keep the, the even spacing, and maybe you just move this over a little bit more just to make it a little bit more even here. And then you'd eventually do the same in the front. So you have this detail, this, this little hood scoop here. So you might want to add in one maybe here. So you'd maybe want one right here and that would keep relatively even spacing while still leaving you the option to make this detail later on. So you always want to think about like what details you're going to be adding in later. So this edge loop here would allow us to add in this hood scoop. Just the same as this edge loop here would help us make this triangle and this one here will be the start of our window area. So probably the most important things to, to just keep in mind are look at where the major details are. Start with the major details like you also have this other crease line which is going across the top. If I can draw this relatively smoothly. So there's this major crease line that also goes across the top. And eventually this actually curves around and 
connects to the bottom part so this is going to curve around and connect to the bottom right here and then you're going to have a line right here for the separation between the bumper and this other piece right here so you always start with the main details the details that are unavoidable you also want to start with the key shading so you like we saw this very clear line going across so we want to make sure we get that key shading line we want that in there as well so all the details such as any crease lines or the doors or the windows start with all the major details and then try to keep as even spacing as possible just be aware that sometimes it's not going to be possible so don't worry about it because there are cases where even spacing is is not going to be possible so a few examples of where you're not going to be able to keep even spacing we'll just take a look at my Aston Martin DB10 I'm just going to go into edit mode here so one of the areas where you won't be able to keep even spacing or it'll be very difficult is like here I added in the door handle here and in order to do that I had to make less even spacing in this area so originally it was very even spacing this was connected down to here but in order to make this door handle I had to move it in this direction and I had to move it in this direction so this is something that really wasn't avoidable I mean it could have continued this down and then still you know in inset this area and put it there but it wasn't avoidable really to make it even spacing because I would have still had these edges right here in between these two edge loops and another example would be up here where we have this detail on the roof it curves inward like this and it really makes it difficult to keep the even spacing in this area so it's, it wasn't really possible here so I didn't have perfectly even spacing but I did try to even it out once I got to the front so that the window and the windshield would you know have even spacing so once I got to the front I tried to make sure things were relatively evenly spaced but in the back it wasn't really possible because I had to add in these details and then another area where I didn't have even spacing was for this part right here it has this very distinct curve that goes around the wheel arch and in order to do that I had to create some extra spacing here because you see the rest of this is very close together and then you have this you know very large spacing in comparison but that just helped me to get this look that I'm looking for where it has you know this part sticking out a lot further you see the wheel arch is sticking out a lot further than this part of the car that goes around pretty much the entire area here so there are times when you will not have even spacing and that's okay but if you don't have even spacing there should be a reason why so there's in this case it's to make that look up at the top it was to make this detail right here over here it was to make the detail on the door handle so if there isn't a reason to have uneven spacing you shouldn't have uneven spacing it should be as even as possible you see these areas are fairly even and when you do make a transition you want to make it relatively smooth transition you don't want to have you know very close here and then the next edge loops like way over here so if I had two edge loops here and then the next edge loop was right over here that'd be a bad idea you'd probably end up with some bad shading but since it's not a, a major change in size then it's not as big of a deal taking another look at another example this is the Audi S6 saloon I just quickly made the roof of this and the hood for this so I went and just started basically in top view I made a plane so I went to create did plane and I started with the very most outer points so I started with this point right here as well as the center point so you want to start with the outer points these were my starting points right here these six and I positioned those correctly in top view and then I did the same in side view so I did three for side view and position these correctly in side view then I added in this center loop so it's always good to just do control R left click right click so that it's perfectly in the center and then you just adjust it on the z-axis in um, side view and again there's going to be times where you don't have perfect spacing so here this happens quite a bit on cars where you'll have a, a larger increase in angle from where the windshield is to the part that's a little bit further out from the windshield so you have to have an edge loop that's fairly close to the windshield usually at least on a lot of cars that I've made so that's one thing to be aware of 
So the, the spacing here wasn't as perfect as the spacing for the rest of this. And the same might be true for the back. So you might have an edge loop that's a little bit closer at the back than it is for the rest of it. You have to just follow the curvature as well as possible, but also try to keep even spacing. So the, the hood was the same. I started in top view. I just started out with the very end points. These points here were my starting points. And I just positioned them in top view, positioned them in side view. And then slowly started adding in more edge loops and then trying to position them as evenly as possible. So again, closer to this point, I had to make this very close so that I could get this curvature that I wanted right here. So I didn't really have the option of making this a bit further out because it wasn't really going to look as well as I wanted it to be. Plus it had to be here for where the top of the light was. So I had to keep this edge loop a bit closer just so I could make the top of the light later if that was what I was going to do. But the rest of this is pretty evenly spaced. It's pretty much what you're looking for when you're trying to have um, good topology and edge flow. And even from top view, you see the spacing is, is very nice. You'll always have this forward curvature, you know, at the top, at the right close to the window. So these edge loops that are closer to the window, you're going to have to just make sure they have forward curvature and then forward curvature again. And you can slowly straighten it out so you see this is more curved and then this is a little bit less curved. This is a little bit less curved and then eventually a little bit less curved and now we're getting towards straighter and straighter and then it starts curving towards the front. So if you're going to make changes in your curvature or your topology, you know the flow of your topology, you want it to be a very gradual change. So a big, a larger curve than a slightly smaller curve slightly smaller and then slightly smaller and then eventually straight and then slowly going towards curving to the front so very gradual changes that what that's what you're looking for whether it's in the curvature or if it's in the spacing so if you want to do a gradual spacing change that's a lot better than doing a large spacing change so if we were to get rid of this edge loop you know this would be a very large spacing change in comparison to the rest of these so this is something you would want to try to avoid. You want to try to keep a gradual spacing change. And you can even see that in this model here where we have larger spacing here and it gradually gets smaller as we get towards the front. So it's not a major change, but it is a change from larger to smaller. Very gradually is what we're looking for. Another thing I would suggest, I'm just going to make a plane real quick. So I'm just going to go create plane, rotate on the Y axis 90 degrees here and then go to side view and use G to move this over as the scale. So another thing I would suggest here, so if we're trying to make these door areas here, for example, is that you always, I've already mentioned this basically, like when I talked about the roof and the hood, how I started with the very outermost points. And again, you're starting with the very outermost points. And the reason I like to do that is because when you do control R and you mouse wheel up, you're going to get perfectly even spacing. So the spacing here is going to be the exactly the same as spacing here and here and here. Because Blender is using a mathematical function to determine how far away to position these vertices. And the same is true on the top. These two and these two are the same distance. So starting with the very outer ones allows you to use control R to automatically get perfect spacing. And then all you have to do is adjust them on the Z on the Z axis. In this case, you'd have to adjust it so that you don't have perfect spacing because you do need to have a vertex here, which means you might need to move this one over slightly just to keep a consistent edge flow. Or since your distance here was changed, changing your distance here to be a little smaller would be good as well. So you just want to do your best to continue keeping even spacing. So in this case you might want to just bring this one over and add in another edge loop and even possibly just move this over some more and add in another edge loop here. But for a base mesh, what I would start with is I would probably not even add these in to begin with. Like these will probably match up fairly nicely with the top of this. But to start out, you really probably don't need this many. So I think this would work out well, just having these being able to connect up. And then this one here would just connect down to this part of the triangle. So that wouldn't have to be 
worried about too much. So this is probably a good level of detail to match up with the level of detail of the roof and the other parts of the car. But to start out, you could even just, you know, ignore these two and these two and just start with the the door crease lines right here. Position them in side view, front view, you know, top view, whatever you need to do. So these would have to go over more to match up with the side of the car and then you would want to adjust them as well by taking you know this vertex would need to be lined up with right here because it's along this line and instead of moving that vertex by itself you might want to just do alt right click and then just you know bring these over because these are all pretty much in the same line and then slide this one over and slide these bottom ones to match up with the reference I guess the last thing I would mention, I've mentioned this many times before, I tell people this all the time, is when you're working with cars specifically and other objects where you typically use like right view, top view, stuff like that. Whenever you're in a specific view like right view, you'll notice we only have two arrows. So we have the blue arrow and the green arrow. So we have the z-axis and the y-axis. So we're missing one axis. In this case, we're missing the red arrow, which is the x-axis. So once you're done positioning it in this view, you still have one more axis to deal with. And since we're missing the x-axis, we can use top view because now you see we have the red arrow. Or you could use front view because again we have the red arrow or back view because again you have the red arrow. So whenever you're positioning things in a view, you want to think about which arrow have you not moved yet. And when you go to that view, so if, if you go to top view after positioning it in side view, only move it on that axis. So you've already positioned it on the x-axis, you've already positioned it on the y-axis. So the only one left is the x-axis. So when you go to top view, you don't want to move it on the y-axis because you've already positioned it on the y-axis in side view. So just move it on the x-axis until it meets up. Even though in this case it's not meeting up perfectly with this door crease line, which I'm not really sure why that is. It's probably because right here, this is when this gets pulled out, this part's actually going to meet up with this part right here is my guess. So if we were to add in a loop cut here with control R left click right click and then just select this and bring this one out. My guess is that this part of the door would actually be right here and then this bottom part would actually start to curve back in. I'll just show you what I mean real quick. So I'm going to alt right click here and I'm just going to pull this part of the door in more because I think this probably curves out and then curves back in based on what I can see in this reference and then this part here actually would be pulled out to meet up with this reference line right there so I'm going to pull these out to make to meet up a little bit better with the reference and we'll get the correct curvature here because now you can see that this is actually meeting up these two lines are meeting up with that and then we have the correct curvature of the door so if we just turn on smooth shading you know, there we go. We've got the, the basic shape of the door area. We've got the roof and the hood. So those are my tips on edge flow and topology. Keep everything evenly spaced. Start with the details that are most important and go from there. Don't worry about it if your spacing's not perfect. There's a lot of cases where it's not going to be. And if you need help, as always, you know, you can talk to me on Discord, ask in the comments if you need some assistance. And if you have any tips yourself or anything else to add, feel free to leave a comment and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you to our awesome Patreon supporters. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter yourself, head on over to patreon.com slash Thank you for your support.